You can travel around the world to attract new jobs to your town, but you're probably better off staying at home. That's why the business retention and expansion program offered by University of Minnesota Extension works alongside communities, helping them listen to local businesses, marshal resources, and take action for their own health and vitality. It's clear that helping local businesses survive and grow is key to successful economic development. Research indicates that up to 80% of new jobs are created by existing businesses rather than by attracting new ones to a community. And retaining an existing business is usually easier and less expensive than recruiting a new one. But not all business retention and expansion efforts are created equal. I'm Michael Darger, Director of the Business Retention and Expansion Program, or BRE, with the University of Minnesota Extension. In Minnesota alone, our program has helped more than 60 communities develop strategies to invigorate local economies. Other states and Canadian provinces also have adopted or borrowed from this model. Well, welcome. I'm so glad that you can join me today in looking at the survey results of your community. What's the secret of Extension's BRE program? First and foremost is our focus on existing businesses. We also recognize that economic development efforts require action from many community players. Without broad-based support, economic development can stall. Our program is a time-tested community involvement approach for building the consensus to move forward. Our approach to business retention and expansion is a realistic, proven method of strengthening your local community. Whether it's a neighborhood in a large metropolitan area like Minneapolis or St. Paul, a suburban town like Blaine, located next to a major metro area, or a rural or semi-rural town like Faribault, located outside of a major metro area. Uh, you do not need to write a compendium. Extension staff provides guidance and support throughout the business retention and expansion process. Extension staffers provide technical assistance, training, and research. They help communities assess business concerns, understand the structure of their local economy, set priorities, and take action to energize their city, town, or neighborhood. As a consultant, I would uh, kind of suggest, cajole, persuade, you know, cat herd, whatever it was, to try to keep the project moving. But it's not my project, it's their project. And I had to always keep that in mind, that I'm there to serve them in their goals. And yet, as I like to say, uh, they don't need to reinvent the wheel with how to do a BRE. They just need to decide where they want to go and get going on the journey. The most important thing that the business retention expansion program does is it builds capacity. It takes the existing resources of the community and it employs them in a strategy that's designed to help the community come together with a clear game plan to march into the future with. It's important that the consultant not do the work for the community. It's important that the community accept the challenge. We're going to do this, and we're going to do it well. It's been really fun to work with Faribault over the years since they've done the BRE. and uh, I came in just at the very end of their process, was at their uh, community retreat. So I got a chance to listen to what some of their concerns were. One of the things that business retention expansion program, the strategies program from the University of Minnesota Extension offers is the opportunity to build social capital and systems that can keep working on many different projects. Uh, that's something that isn't offered in many programs. Uh, you can find a lot of people who will say, yes, I'll come in and interview your businesses for you and bring you survey results. But this is a system then that the people become more involved. Ethnic Chambers of Commerce in the Twin Cities, Blaine and Faribault. Each of these communities chose to work through the Business Retention and Expansion Program's three-step process. Step one, research. Step two, prioritize. And step three, implement. The entire process involves learning a community's business needs then building a broad-based consensus to respond to those needs. Bringing all the players to the table engages the entire community and significantly increases the chances of success. Let's take a closer look at the BR&D process. 
During step one, extension staff works with community residents to organize a leadership team, which sets goals and recruits volunteers for a larger task force representing a wide range of community interests. We know that succession planning is one issue and internet access is the other. As a community begins the BRND process, it's critical that everyone is clear on why they're making the effort. What I would like to see as a result of the business retention and expansion project are possibly three, uh, maybe more, um, projects that come to light that we can um, put forward as a united group that the chamber would expand their number of members and that the members businesses would grow thrive and expand following organization of the task force members are trained by extension staff to conduct visits with local businesses visitors use a survey developed by the community leadership team in consultation with university of minnesota experts Next are the business visits themselves. This is where task force volunteers learn what local businesses like and don't like about their community, what they need, and what they're concerned about. These visits yield a treasure trove of information and promote goodwill by simply listening to business owners. Faribault volunteers visited 91 businesses, an impressive 83% of the 110 targeted. We wanted to find a way to really show our appreciation to those businesses that are opening their doors every day and providing jobs and, and activity and economic vitality in the community. And we wanted to recognize them, but also to hear from them. What challenges were they facing or what frustrations do they have that we as local agencies could address on a small scale from a little pothole in front of their driveway to the bigger issues of public policy and, and even state legislative issues that they brought to our attention that we could become more active in. In step two, task force visitors follow up on warning flag issues short-term important concerns identified from the surveys of business owners. These concerns, also called red flags, might regard issues that could create layoffs or ways that local resources are letting them down. The community needs to address such issues immediately. Dealing promptly with urgent concerns makes good sense, of course, but it also builds credibility and keeps momentum going. When we found out that the business owner still had uh, issue with old uh, decisions made by prior city councils, we were surprised to hear that. And the nice thing was the surveying process brought this forward, so we were able to kind of mend, mend the fences or, or mend the relationships between the city and the business owner. Business owners talk to each other, and a business owner in Blaine may talk to a business owner in a neighboring community. And through the negative feedback, other business owners probably would rethink locating to Blaine. But because of the program and the surveying and the red flags, we were able to kind of stop that negative communication that was going on. Also in step two, extension staffers analyze the survey data and prepare a research report with suggestions for the task force, which chooses three to five priority projects for implementation. After that, staffers write a summary report. Analyst writer Bridget Tuck plays a key role in analyzing data and preparing reports. What I think is really unique about my role in the process is that we really, and, and the BRD Prior Report, report uh, for Extension in general, is that we really take a holistic view of the project. We really are sitting down and trying to guide the community step by step through the whole process and really serve just as a resource and a guide. We provide the resources and we provide assistance, but it's really the community that is doing this project. And I think communities in the end get an actionable goal and set of projects that they can work on that will fit the, the businesses in their community's needs and not just somebody's idea of what they need. At the conclusion of step two, the community gathers to learn about the priority project selected by the task force. This is the last key action before the work of implementing the projects begins. Everything culminates in step three, when project teams enact the priority projects identified earlier. 
This is where the broad-based consensus built during steps one and two pays off. Let's see how our three communities are implementing their priority projects, or in the case of the ethnic chambers of commerce, preparing to implement them. At this time, ethnic chambers of commerce in the Twin Cities are midway through their participation in the business retention and expansion program. Business owner and president of the Minnesota Black Chamber of Commerce, Barbara Davis, expresses her vision for the effort. We certainly hope that the business retention and expansion project will, will help people stay in business. Um, one of the ways we think it'll help is that we're asking people specific questions about what their problems are, what issues they have to face in keeping their business going on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we hope to be able to find some solutions for them. Since its participation in the BR&D program, Blaine has been working on a number of priority projects. One set up an educational training series to train and develop employees of Blaine-based businesses. These classes are a joint effort of Anoka Ramsey Community College, Anoka Technical College, and the Minnesota Workforce Center. The City of Blaine subsidizes the cost of the classes held each spring and fall at Blaine City Hall. All of the programs were customized. Um, with every instructor that we worked with, we um, gave them the information that we had gained from our interviews and our surveys. So everything was customized specifically for this uh, uh, business retention and expansion program. Attending the classes has changed the way that they do their work. A lot of them understood that they had um, gaps in some skills and they came to the class and it gave them a great deal of confidence to go back. What I observed was that there was a lot of personal development um, that took place during the certificate programs. And then of course that translates um, <laughs> many fold uh, actually on the business site. Just to kind of spread the wealth yeah. so they both get um, connections with local business. Yeah. In another priority project, Blaine named Kurt Larson, the city's economic development specialist, as business liaison to improve communication with local businesses. The business liaison is probably the most important uh, program that we have, priority program that we have, because I am physically going out and meeting with the company owners, and I am establishing a relationship between the city and the business owner so they feel comfortable contacting me anytime there's an issue or concern or question that they may have. Like Blaine, the City of Faribault continues to implement several priority projects. One was designed to improve the image of Faribault to both local residents and business prospects. The result was an integrated marketing campaign to promote Faribault as a great place to live and work under the theme Small Town Pride, Big City Opportunities. The branding campaign tells the city's story in such venues as print, a website, a DVD, and on banners throughout the city. The city also provides an economic development toolbox of information and resources to help existing businesses thrive and new businesses relocate to Faribault. In this world of um, sales, of selling ourselves, I believe that our existing businesses are our best ambassadors for us as our existing customers in any of our businesses are our best ambassadors. It's the word of mouth that travels throughout the, com the community that is better than any advertising that any of us could ever do. The BR&D survey of business owners in Faribault also revealed a strong desire to improve its physical appearance. This resulted in another priority project that proved tremendously popular with the public as well as with businesses. Hundreds of volunteers of all ages joined together over several years to clean up and plant trees and flowers along main roads and city streets. Independent sales contractor Lynn Erickson played a major role in the beautification project. I think the appearance of a city is important. When I think about all of the, um, when I think about some of the cities that I go into that are really n nice looking and have flowers and nice bridges and nice lighting and things like that. I think that's important for people to be proud of their community. I think it's important for businesses to um, 
enjoy the, the flowers and when they're driving or when people are walking and things like that. And that's why I think that that is important for economic development. In another priority project, Faribault sought to better engage new immigrant populations and minority-owned businesses with the wider community. And I can't say that we made tremendous strides there, but we did crack the door open a little bit. And what did happen is that our Welcome Center and our Diversity Coalition took on more of a business approach. So what do business owners say about the business retention and expansion program? As far as I'm concerned, the major purpose of the business retention and expansion project is getting people together, listening to people. People who didn't feel like anyone was listening to them before can now express themselves and then they can have somebody to talk to. I think that's probably, as far as I'm concerned, the major benefit of the whole project. When you um, move into a community like uh, we did, uh, Top Tool did, and you find it that it's a very thriving community and there are people and programs in place to make it a better community, you're very happy to be there. And even though from time to time Top Tool gets uh, solicitations from other communities to think about moving there, uh, it, because of this program, the Business Retention and Expansion Program, we are very satisfied in staying at top, at, in Plain. I'm a sort of a walking endorsement because we did, uh, for the Business Retention Expansion Program, it really, like I said earlier, it did exceed our expectations. We've been able to take things that, that were developed through those processes, through those bureaucratic steps. Uh, we basically have taken those and continued them for the benefit of the, of, of the community, and, and I think that it's really, and I would really endorse it. Extension educator Claudia Cody sums up the value of the business retention and expansion program this way. Well, BRE brings to the table uh, a jump start to the community. The community leaders, we cherish the community leaders through empowerment, through knowledge. We bring the research from the university to the community level and the community feels that they, they, under, they are not being smothered by anybody. They recognize that they, they can achieve their dreams and it's focused. We bring focus, we bring a, a strategic planning process that is well tested, well known to function, but most of all, we leave the power in the hands of the people. Remember, not all business retention and expansion programs are created equal. The BRE program from University of Minnesota Extension benefits communities as a whole as well as individuals who volunteer for the program. Our program builds networks and community capacity, educates and informs the community about the local economy, brings communities together, demonstrates that you care about local businesses, and generates results. For more information on the Business Retention and Expansion Program, call our phone number or visit our website. University of Minnesota Extension would be pleased to work with you.